Let's make a steel pan in Vital. You can download this preset along with over 200 useful presets in my preset pack called Sounds You Know. A link for that's in the description. Now before I jump into a step-by-step -step tutorial, I want to talk a little bit about my process for making a preset like this. So if I'm recreating a sound, my first step will be to load in a good sample of that sound, in this case, a steel pan. I'll take a listen to the sound, but I'll also take a look at the sound using a tool like this. This is a free plugin called Span that I highly recommend. So this is a spectrum analyzer. On the x-axis we have frequency, and on the y-axis we have amplitude. And so we can get pretty scientific about what frequencies are in our sound and how loud they are. So if I hover over one of these spikes, I can tell the note here, um, and then if it's flat or sharp and by how many cents, it could give me the frequency in hertz. And then based on the height here, that gives us our amplitude in decibels. So the first thing I'm going to notice is where the fundamental is. And that's usually the tallest, lowest spike here, but not always. There are some spikes below this, but that's just noise. And I want to take a note of that so I can recreate that later. So it looks like our fundamental is B4. And if I'm not sure, I can check to see if there are any harmonics of that frequency. So the next big spike's up here. That's a B5. So the second harmonic's an octave above the first one. It's a pretty good indicator that B4 is our fundamental here. And then when I'm making this sound, I want to pay attention to the volume of these different harmonics. Are all the harmonics even there? It looks like these harmonics here, B, D sharp, F sharp, those are all really loud. But then the seventh harmonic here, an A, that one's pretty quiet. So we're going to recreate this sound by drawing in those frequencies in a wavetable editor later. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the sample and the preset. So I recreated this sound by using the, all three oscillators here. So the fundamental is actually in oscillator 2 here. Now the reason I'm going down an octave is because I noticed there was a D sharp um, just above the octave above the fundamental. So that would be... 16 semitones above the fundamental, but that doesn't happen in the harmonic series until an octave later. So my solution was just to move this down an octave, use the second harmonic as the fundamental, uh, and then add in the fifth harmonic for that D sharp that I was seeing in the spectrum analyzer. Then for oscillator one, I'm creating that noise, those little spikes that I was pointing out around the fundamental. So in order to do that, I added in 16 voices of detune at 100%, and then I went even further in the advanced tab here, you can increase that detune range, and I increased it from the default of 2 here all the way to 12. So I'm getting quite a bit of noise from that oscillator, and then I'm tapering it off by using a bandpass filter here. So the bandpass filter is boosting uh, the frequency that I'm playing here with a key tracking filter at zero semitones, and then it's tapering off the um, detuned voices the further away from the fundamental that they get. Uh, so those two oscillators together sound like this. Now I'm also adding in detune for oscillator 2, uh, and we'll talk more about that later. Then for oscillator 3, this is where all the brassy, metallic kind of sound comes from. And I'll solo that so you can hear it by itself. There's some detune for this one as well. And then let's take a look at the frequencies here. So this is carefully crafted by going back and forth uh, between the sample and the preset and by looking at that spectrum analyzer for both vital and the sample. So I was noticing that there was the, um, the, the second harmonic here is actually our fundamental in this case. Um, and then I'm noticing uh, a major triad right here. So if I'm still playing B, uh, this is B, this is F sharp, that was kind of quiet in the sound, but then pretty loud in the sound was this major triad here. B, D sharp, F sharp, the A was pretty quiet, then the B up here was pretty loud again. And then there's some additional sounds up here. 
So basically, I just went back and forth, and it really helps to have the harmonic series memorized to remember those notes and be able to transpose them. It's immensely helpful, um, especially when you're going back and forth between the spectrum analyzer and the wavetable editor. Then to finish off, I'm using filter 2 on oscillator 3. This is controlling the brightness of the sound. You can see it move up and down. And it has a little bit of attack time here because what I noticed in a steel pan was that the brassiness, that bright sound, happens sort of after the transient. So if I were to move that to the beginning, it suddenly doesn't sound natural. It doesn't sound like a steel drum anymore. If it's too long, it also doesn't sound like a steel drum. So there's a sweet spot in there somewhere. And I'm using LFOs one through three to control amplitude and the filter, just to get more control over the shape of the sound. After that, in the effects, I'm using a single band compressor uh, to give it a little bit more punch, and then I'm adding a reverb. To get started, initialize preset. For this one, we're gonna be using a sine wave. Oscillator one is just gonna be making the noise that we saw around the fundamental. So this is gonna be the quietest part of the sound. So we're gonna turn phase randomization all the way down to zero. We're gonna turn up the voices all the way to 16 and then the percentage of detune to 100%. Then go to the advanced tab and then switch the range of the detune from two to 12. And then it sounds like this. So it's quite a mess. So let's tame that with a filter. Let's use a digital 24 decibel filter. Let's make it a bandpass. Let's set the resonance to 80%. Turn up key tracking all the way. And now it's going to be boosting the fundamental and cutting out the frequencies that are really far away from that fundamental on either side of it. Now we're getting quite a bit of distortion from that, but that's okay because we're gonna control the volume with an LFO and it's gonna be really quiet. So turn down the volume of oscillator one Let's use LFO one. So we're gonna set LFO one to envelope mode so it doesn't keep repeating. Then set the seconds, uh, the unit to seconds, and then we're gonna choose 2.2 seconds for this one. Then set your X and Y grid to 10 by four, and then double click to add a dot and bring that over to this corner here. Then I'm gonna make these a little bit curved by pulling on these points. And then I'm gonna drag that over to level and reduce this down to something like 0.2. So it's pretty quiet. Uh, one thing I want to do is go back to the advanced tab and turn down stereo unison all the way so that it's in mono. And you can see it a little bit better than you can hear it. Now we're going to add to that um, a more tonal frequency and that's going to be our fundamental. So open up oscillator two. Let's make this a basic shape again, sine wave. Turn down phase randomization to zero. This one's gonna be down an octave so that we can add in this uh, major third, um, the fifth harmonic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in the second harmonic, oops, all the way. We can erase the first harmonic and then go to the third, fourth, fifth harmonic and add that in there. It's not too loud, somewhere around there. Um, and then we're gonna use LFO2 to control the amplitude of oscillator two. So for LFO2, Let's set this to envelope, set the unit to seconds. And then for LFO2, this one's at three seconds. And let's see, this grid is eight by three, so switch your grid to that. Mine's already there. Double click somewhere on here to add in a point and drag this to the corner. Give it a little curvature. And then let's add this to the level of oscillator two. So drag this over. And now we get this. Now let's add in some detune. So for oscillator two, this is at eight voices with, let's set this to 0% detune because we're gonna use LFO two to control that. So drag that over. And then let's go to the advanced tab. Let's turn down the stereo unison and let's actually turn down the unison blend all the way, which you might think would completely negate this, but it actually still sounds uh, a little bit detuned. Mm -hmm. 
So now let's add in that brassy metallic quality to the sound. And to do that, let's use oscillator three. So turn on oscillator three and turn the phase randomization to zero. And then let's go to the wavetable editor by clicking the pencil icon. So we're getting the fundamental from oscillators one and two. So I'm gonna turn that down. And then I'm gonna turn up the second partial here, the fourth partial, fifth partial, sixth partial, eighth partial, uh, and then nine and 10, let's keep those where they are. Turn down 11 a bit, turn up 12 a bit, hover over 12 and right click and click clear right. And then let's add in the 16th and 20th harmonics. So this one's the 12th one, so we can go 13, 14, 15, 16, and then 17, 18, 19, 20. And these should be pretty quiet here. So now that I have that, let's hear it. Just kind of sounds like an organ. Uh, but let's add in some unison voices, 8% at 35% detune. Uh, I guess I can't drag it, so 35. Uh, and then let's go to the advanced tab, turn down stereo unison, so it's mono. And then let's turn down the unison blend down to four, which doesn't seem like much, but you'll still notice it. And then after that, let's add in an envelope and a filter. So in order to control the level, I'm gonna turn that all the way down. Let's use LFO3. So I'm gonna set LFO3 to envelope mode, then go to seconds and set it to 1.5 seconds. I'm gonna make it a saw down shape by dragging this over and then make sure your Y unit here is at 12. So you can drag this middle point down to 1 12th. Then you're gonna grab this top point here and just move it slightly to the right. And then let's drag this over to the level of oscillator three. Um, and then for filter two, uh, it, turn that on if you haven't already. It shouldn't be routed for oscillator two, it should be routed for oscillator three. Let's turn down the resonance here. Um, and then let's drag over uh, LFO three to control this. Right click on that modulation amount and let's decrease this to 55. Um, but we're not done yet. I'm gonna let in a little bit more of the highs by adjusting the blend here to 0 0.02. And you'd be surprised at how much that little bit adds. So now let's hear this. And now it's starting to sound a lot more like a steel drum. Make sure you add in this little bit of attack time because if you don't have that, you just get that and it doesn't really sound like a steel drum. So you kind of need to go by ear here. Um, it's not going to let you get um, terribly close to the, the left margin here, um, but you can drag it around a little bit until uh, you think it sounds good. Uh, so anyways, now that I've done that, let's add in some effects. So let's go to the effects page. Let's turn on the compressor. This is going to be single band. I'm going to double click this. I don't need it. Uh, I'm going to raise the threshold to about negative 20. And then I'm going to increase the ratio by clicking here and then dragging down a bit. I'm going to turn up attack all the way. Let's hear this. So now that I have that, let's turn on the reverb. For the reverb, this is pretty simple. Uh, I just increased the time a little bit to 1.2. Uh, the size I decreased to about 40. Uh, I didn't want too much of it in the mix, so I decreased that to 20. Um, and I liked to uh, increase the cutoff here to about 100. Uh, and that should be pretty good for this sound. So now that we've done that, uh, let's add in some velocity controls. So for the velocity, the first thing we can do is just add in some velocity tracking here. Um, but I'm actually going to do that with macro one. So I'm going to drag that over. Uh, I'm going to set this to 0.5, and I'm going to turn it up all the way here. Um, so with velocity control, I'm going to drag this over to the frequency of uh, some of these uh, LFOs. So for example, LFO1, I'm going to drag this over to the frequency and then set this to negative uh, 0.05, so that uh, lower velocities are shorter notes. So once I've done that, I'm gonna drag this over to the frequency of LFO2. This one a little less severe. Uh, I'm gonna set this one to negative 0.03. Um, and then let's have LFO3 control um, the filter cutoff. 
So this modulation right here. So I'm going to drag that over. But I still want that modulation to take place even at the lowest velocity. So what I'm going to do is remap that and just give it a floor. So basically what I'm going to do is set the Y grid to 3. Uh, I'm going to make sure I'm controlling velocity to modulation amount. Um, you can see which one you're selecting by this little purple thing. Uh, and then I'm going to raise this to the first third there. So that now... Even my lowest velocities are going to have this modulation take place uh, at least 33%. Um, so now that I've done that, I'm going to use Macro 1, which is controlling uh, velocity tracking. And I'm going to drag that over to all of those. So now Macro 1 is controlling basically the um, amount of velocity sensitivity there is, but at zero, um, it's as if you're playing the lowest velocity. So I'm going to keep that at 100%. I'm going to call it Bell Sense. Then for Macro 2, let's use this to control the volume of our fundamental. Um, I noticed that the uh, sample had the fundamental a little bit louder. Um, and I, I made mine just a little bit quieter just because I thought it would sit in the mix a little bit better. But... Um, if you don't want that, you can control the, uh, the amount that LFOs are controlling the uh, level here. So this is uh, the uh, control for the level of oscillator 2. So I'm going to drag that over. And I'm going to call this uh, fundamental. Fundum for short. Um, so for this one, I think in the original I set this to about 0.55. And you can hear it's quite a bit brighter. If you want it a little closer to the original, you could probably go like 0.7, something like that. And then for macro 3, I use this for detune. So there's a couple ways we can control detune here. Uh, you'll notice uh, LFO2 is controlling the detune of oscillator 2. Uh, so I'm going to make this bipolar by dragging, uh, holding shift and dragging over to that modulation amount. And uh, I'm going to set it back to where it was by... Um, setting macro 3 to 0.5, then hold shift and drag this over to the detune of oscillator 3. Um, so now it should still sound the same. If I want more detune, if I want no detune, but I think I, I found a pretty good sweet spot there in the middle. So I'm going to label this detune. Uh, and there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching. Thank you.